Go to the Tools panel of Affinity Designer and select the Ellipse tool. Create a circle or any shape, doesn't matter, it can be a star, etc. This is going to be my bottom shape. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create another shape, a circle again, and I'm going to change the colour. So I'm going to click here and maybe make it red or something else. So you can see the difference. So red is the new shape and that's above there. Well, what you can do, you can select both of the shapes and you can go here to a layer and create compound. So create compound. Now I've got a shortcut for that, Alt C or Option C. So create compound. So it becomes compound. Now you can see what happens. The color for the new shape, this one, has gone. It's still there. I mean, if you select, you can see it's still red. However, you will not see it as red. It's a compound shape. It only uses this, which was the original shape color. Now you can change this if you want to change, and I'll do that later. So with this now, I can go up here and you'll notice because I've gone for compound, there's this little option here, just a little, little plus there. So it's added, it's added to this design here. And I can move that in, I can move it around. And of course, it doesn't particularly make any difference. You can't see any difference. However, if I go here, click there, you can see you've got an option for subtract. So subtract, now you can see what happens. It just cuts away and I can still continue to move it around, reposition it, I can resize it. Now, if I go off it and try and select it now, I can't. I have to go here. I have to go to the layers panel and select it that way. Can't select it. Once it's, you've sort of deselected it, you have to go back to the layers. Please put in a comment below if you know of a way of selecting it otherwise. And you can just drag this around and reposition it. But you also notice you've got other options as well. And I'm just going to go for, let's just make it a bit bigger. You can go here and intersect. Now you can see with intersect, if I move that out, obviously you've got the original circle there. So if I go all the way over, you can see the whole thing. Now the intersect is just that bit that's the overlap with that. And I can just go all the way out and I can go, and then you can't see it at all, the original circle. Now I can go here and I can still continue like this one, I can move that one as well. So I can reposition that. And again, the intersect between the two is displayed, the rest is not. And there's another option. Just select there and you've got XOR, which is the opposite. So you've got now the bit that's not over, just cut out these ones and this one. And you can see as I move that around, obviously I go all full on, it looks exactly the same as an ad. But as soon as I move it in, you can see it just cuts away the bit that overlaps. And you can just move that around. For most of this though, I'm just going to go for subtract. I think that's the most obvious one to, to look at. And you can move this around, change it, position, etc. You decide, you know what, I don't want blue. Well, what you can do, just go to the compound. Just go back to the compound shape, select that. And now you can go to swatches or up here. And you can say, you know what, I want it to be red or a gradient, etc. So again, the layers, just change it at the compound level. That's the key thing. If you go here, change it there, it will make no difference. You can't go and change it. So if I go here and try and change that, it doesn't, it just ignores it. Anything at that level, ignored. Compound, it will work and change the color. You can also use something like the grain tool, manipulate it, etc. You can also, if you want to, just go down here. Just going to go down to this bit and effects so you can click here and you can see you've got well let's go for inner shadow it's a particularly obvious one radius and offset and you can see then you've got an inner shadow coming in like that you can also go maybe for 3d you can see you've got a 3d effect and that's all at the compound level so at this and this there's no effects at all. No effects there, no effects there. It's just at the compound level, you can see it. And you can move it, of course, as well, if you don't want that. So with that, what you can do, select there. Select this one, which is the smaller one. Now, it does it in a slightly the odd order, but it's, it's not particularly, I suppose, because this is the one that's below. This was the original shape. That was the original shape. And this one is on top. And that's the one you're changing. This one doesn't have that little feature there. And again, what you can do, again, you can, whoops, don't want to do that. I want to move that backwards and forward. But I can also add another shape. So let's just move that out of the way. Maybe go for a star this time. So let's just add a star. 
Now, by default, when you put it, it puts it as plus. I don't know why it does that, especially when you were selecting something that was negative. You'd think that it would just ooh, inherit that setting. That would be the most obvious thing. And maybe there's a setting for that. I don't know. I haven't seen one, but if there is, it'd be great to know. And again, subtract. So you can see now I can subtract it again. And I can still continue to move this around and reposition it. And I can move it there, move it there, and so on. Resize. And also, I can still go up here. I can still use, because it's still an active like star design there. However, what you can also do is you can turn around and say, oh, you know what? Right click and convert to curves. I can convert it to a curve. Now, it doesn't lose this bit. It just becomes curves, just become a curve. So now what I can do is go over here to the node tool. With node tool, you can see I can select that. I can still move those around. I can reposition it. I can position it there, position that there. And it's all within, so I can just drag that out. And you can see it cuts away there. And I can continue to do that. And also add points and manipulate it all kinds of different ways. And that's all still live. So I can still go, you know, what I decide, I think I'm going to change that to make it intersect or XOR. I can just run through those or add. So you can see, you can just change them very quickly using this feature here. And again, got this one here. Hold down the alter option key. That's selected and duplicate it. Now with that duplicate it, you can see that moves around. Oh, it just beeped a bit for me. But again, you can see it's there. Now the original one is still down there. You might like to change the name of it, but you can see that it's not the one that's the, the key thing here. These are the ones that are being cut away from this. This is the original shape. These are the ones that are cutting away. So that one there, you can hold down the alter option key and duplicate that. Hold that again, cut away, cut away, cut away, and so on. So you can create, again, some very unusual shapes. Just build them up in all kinds of different ways. Now you've got this compound here. Well, what you can do with this, you can turn around and say, hold down the alter option key and you can duplicate this. So I'm just gonna do that. And you can see now I've duplicated it. So you've got a compound and a compound. And you can still, well, you can go to this one and you can say, you know what? Let's just change something. I can move it around. They're independent. They're not, they're not connected. They're not linked or anything. And you can still continue to add additional shapes, hold down the alter option key and cut away, change the design, etc. But you can also select all of those. So uh, let's just select all of them. Just probably best to do it via the layers panel. They're all selected, everything's selected there now. Well, is that the same as before? Layer and create compound. So create compound and it becomes all one single compound. Then you've got a compound of a compound does get, sometimes you get to this point where you, right, but you can still go down to here and you can see you've got this feature here where you can still change that. You can move those, change that. And as you do that, you notice that it changes. So you can go add, subtract, intersect, etc. You can go backwards and forwards between those. It follows exactly the same rules as it did before. So keep it subtract. You can still move it around, reposition it, etc. But also, you notice when you, got that compound there you've got the compound and compound the one that was the one that was the below item the, the original original and you've got the one that's on top this compound you've now got exactly the same structure you've got this little plus here so you can turn around and say oh you know what it defaults to add always does I have never seen it default to subtract be nice if it did like I say it'd be nice if it remembered however it doesn't so what you can do you can say subtract so subtract and now what you can see is with this design selected, I can move that around and it's subtracting from the other one. So you can see it just cuts away from that original shape and you can still, you can continue to like resize it, move it around like that. You can also go into it and turn around and say, oh, that curve there, that star that I created, I can still move that around. I can still change these settings, position it like that. So you can create some very unusual shapes using compounds of compounds. Now I'm just gonna bring those back together because what you can do, strange enough, you can do exactly the same. 
hold down the alter option key and duplicate again, hold it down again, and so on. You can see what you can do. You can build up immensely complicated designs, group them all together, go to layer, and again, create compound. And then you see you've got this compound design of all of those shapes. Okay, it does get a bit sort of compound and compound. You can see the complexity to that, but you can still edit it. It's still live and can still be manipulated. However, you're probably thinking now, well, that's great. You've got all this complexity. You've got this design. You created this great design you're happy with. What can I do with it? I want it to be just a normal design, back to a normal, regular shape that I can manipulate. All you need to do is go to Convert to Curves. So Convert to Curves, and that's it. Simple as that. All that complexity is now gone. And you've got even more complexity because you've got now the node tool and you can see you've got all the nodes that were created and you can then manipulate. So you just drag that, move that around and so on. So you've got instant, very complex, or depending on what you want to do, very basic shape designs that you can create using this approach. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Thank you much.